If it's Aussie and it rocks, it's right here. This is Triple M's Homegrown with Matty O. Yeah, it's right around the country on the Triple M Network, 49 stations. No mucking around today. We're talking five albums, over 40 million streams, sold out shows, festivals, top 10 albums. We've got a brand new album. You know what I'm talking about. Tracks you love, over drinking over you. Great to be alive. Sit back, enjoy the ride. Lucky stars, everything is beautiful. You know what it is, we spin it. Standing on every corner, walking down every street, where some bad CDs all up. It's hit after hit after hit. And it's about time someone brought back the whistle. Conversation. It is an absolute pleasure to welcome back Tom and Jeremy, Busby Maru, Albums Out, lads. Welcome to Triple M's Homegrown. Hey, it's good to see habit. you. Thanks, Matty. What that, an intro. Wasn't it? <laughs> I feel actually... Yeah, thank you. No, you're more than welcome. It's good to see you guys again. I, I was thinking, like, you guys were one of the first ever interviews we had on this show. And God, time has changed since 2019, hasn't it? Mate, well, look at the new digs. You're a superstar now. Yeah, the we, radio we, generation. <laughs> we got a new studio. Fifth album, how do we celebrate this release? And how is it different to the first? Do you remember how you celebrated your first release? Um... I can remember how Jeremy celebrated. You've probably forgotten. Here we go. Actually, it's really special. We, <laughs> it was probably, I, I, I'll uh, rewind to say that when we actually had the, when we released our first album, we, we basically just said, here you go, mate, here's our CD. Because, you know, we didn't know what a release was. We weren't signed. Yeah. We had absolutely no idea. Mm. But Jeremy, can you remember you and your uncle drive to Five we Rocks? To Five Rocks at like. After a big night. Talk to us about Five Rocks, for those who don't know. Where, oh, it's an amazing place, just outside of Yapoon, where we grew up. We used to always go there as kids. We still yeah. do when we get the time. You can only get there by full drive um, mm-hmm. or helicopter. But it is magical. Best beaches you'll ever see. Yeah. Surfing, fishing. It's beautiful. So I decided to drive there. I don't know. I can't. I, I remember getting there. But, um, and I think we had a gig the next day, didn't we? Yeah, you had something. And you, and you were hanging around and someone said, look, I'll drive you there now, I think. That's and right. then you and your yeah. uncle went, right, let's go. You are full. Yeah. And you went there and watched the sun come up and listen to the album. Oh, started. nice, <laughs> man. It's up on the top of the orange bowl. If you've yeah. been to the orange bowl, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's amazing. Yeah, nice. Well, fifth album, how did that start? Start in Rocky. Yeah, started, uh, well, it started everywhere. Yeah, what, um, this was different, you know. Um, we decided that we had time for the first time. We were in no rush. Yeah. And in fact, we're probably one of the luckier bands that went through that weird last few year period. Yeah. Um, being up in Queensland, we, we weren't as affected as uh, most other states, but we also hadn't seen our families for a long time. So we didn't, um, we weren't in a rush to get back on the road. It was the first time in our entire career, 20 years, hanging out together that we could not, uh, that we were able to say no. Mm. Because you know, as a muser, you can't say no. Yeah, you just yeah. got to keep going and yeah, yeah, yeah. put food on the table, and you got to do your thing. And plus, mm. we love it. And what else do we? What else are we going to do? Hanging yeah. out at home, and yeah. actually, this time we could, and we felt this awesome feeling of just hanging out with the family and uh, saying no to things. It was really important that we did. And so, when it came to recording, it finally getting off our asses, I suppose, and getting back into the studio. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we were like, right. Well, we got a gig at Port Douglas. Let's get an Airbnb for a week either side of it um, mm. and start mucking around with tunes. And we nice. did. And so then we're just sort of working out where we were to hanging out together. We went to Keppel Island with a few mates. And nice. Mulaney. Did a week there. Mulaney. Yeah. Um, place called Stony Creek up near Cairns. Yeah. So we just were potting along uh, and just capturing moments. And nice. when the album started coming together, in fact, we thought we had the album, but none of those songs made the actual record. Yeah. So uh, when it started coming together, we were like, oh, I think we got heaps of songs. Let's let's yeah. get an Airbnb and start recording. I think there's a big difference between like going away to do writing sessions overseas and being here and kind of letting the songs come to you, which yeah. is what I really felt happened with you guys in this album yeah. too, which, which is important, right? It's, and so it's good true. not to rush. I've got to give a uh, hats off to our manager as well because he was like, y- you can end, you can be- not so much because of the pressure, just because of the time restraints. You're like, all right, we're always on the road. Let's go to 
uh, let's go set in a factory session, you know, and all of a sudden you're, mm. you're scheduling and writing, which is not the funnest thing to do, scheduling yeah. and writing. Yeah. But, yeah, you're right. We Our manager was like, you guys just got to do your thing. Everyone wants to see you guys and hear you guys do your thing, take your time. And Yeah. Yeah, you're right when it comes together. Like listening back to the album now and all the feedback since the release has been – um. You know, really, really good, actually, yeah. really positive. So. Do you think this will be the way you guys kind of work in the future? Like after, like, you know, an album cycle and tour, you will take just that little bit longer, extra time to kind of reset and then so you can come back creatively, you know, yeah, in a I, I, much I, more. Absolutely. Yeah, no. And because of our, ki- the ki- our kids are at different stages in lives and hanging out with the kids is so important to us now. Yeah. But I think that the difference between this album and the other albums is, we, we one, we had time and we didn't really... You know, we, 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 at the end of it, we got a studio and we set the studio up and went and did it in the studio. But most of it was done Airbnbs where we were real comfortable. We were in our own space. We just put headphones on and we just talked to each other in different rooms. Yeah. yeah. You family. could go. You wanted to come and visit us, go have a swim. Yeah. Yeah. No. You could it go was, and, um, you'd, tra- you'd track your vocals and Jeremy would be out doing guitars and I could go hang out, have a sleep in my room and I'd just put one of the earphones in to hear what um, they're doing every now and then. Yeah, Cause it was, it was all so wireless. Much and, more oh, relaxed. right. Yeah. And then you could, then we had a couple of different houses. So you sort of could, hang out with the boys in the other house and if you every now and then they'd go oh put that on Jeremy's doing that solo for that and so you listen to it and you go oh yeah great I'm going to go over for this Whoa, that's come really over fair. And it was, it was, mate, it was, oh, it was so awesome good. yeah so good and we had all the boys around too all the band and all our close friends and um, that were contributing to it managers yeah. and it was a big family kind of vibe we were having barbies every night and beers and you know not many huge and late nights but there were a couple yeah, um, yeah, yeah. but mostly it was just yeah just trying to capture the yeah. moment. And unlike the studio sessions, when you actually have a studio, you're, you've got a limited time. You know, you might have, I don't know, 11 in the morning till nine at night. Yeah. And most of the time, and most bands would agree that the magic doesn't happen until after midnight. I was going to say, where a lot of the writing <laughs> and the recording, the recording of this done at night. Yeah, yeah. Some of yeah. The yeah. I like that. I yeah. Like that. And then that was the beauty because you think you're all done, you're done for your day and you could have a sleep and then we we're you know, a few of us were getting a bit slippery and like, hang on, you're really digging into one song. Yeah. And they're like, Jeremy be asleep and we're like, get him up, get him up. <laughs> he'd come and go, oh, you bastards. <laughs> and then yeah, yeah, yeah. get the headphones on and have a beer and all of a sudden he's into it. You're like, it's two in the morning. He's like, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you guys had friends around and managers because I feel like you know, when you're recording an album and you're, you're kind of in a space, it's good to be able to switch off from the recording as well so you can come back to it with fresh ears. Otherwise, it's very easy to do like a 12, 13 hour day it. and just yeah. keep going back to back. Oh, you yeah. do. And you need a break. You need, I mean, the producer doesn't stop though. He's, holy moly. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah. Three hats votes. off to those guys. Yeah. They, I don't know how they look at that computer screen for that long. I, totally right. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, then yeah. they've got to, you know, just when their brain's fatigue and they're shattered, I'll come in after a few beers at three in the morning and go, I want to do a vocal take. Yeah. And uh, all of a sudden he's got to, you know, freshen up again and go, okay, there might be something magic in it. Most yeah. of the time there wasn't too much magic in those three. <laughs> <hours in. laughs> I was going to say, was there a bit of songwriting with this man? Nothing I can do. <laughs> ah. I only want to be with you. Tell us, how the hell did you hook up with uh, Darius? Yeah, Darius Rucker. From uh, Hootie and the Blowfish, of course, one of the biggest mm. bands of all time. Mate, that's crazy. Even doing research since, realising that their debut album... Yeah. Well, they were the highest selling debut album, I think, ever, or at 90s. least in the 90s. In the 90s yeah. Which is huge. That's when people bought albums. I mean, that makes a lot of sense because his house was... Bigger than Rockhampton. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, no, it wasn't that big, but it was beautiful. We we were overseas. We were hanging out with some mates and we were doing some writing and recording. This, we actually, prior to the fourth album, The Great Divide. Right. And we had, had met him briefly when he came over for CMC Festival, one of those festivals. Yeah. And uh, we got a call from my mate who's a publisher. He's like, would you guys like to write with Darius Rucker? I'm like, what? Hello? What yeah, are you yeah, talking yeah. about? Yeah. And he went, I don't have any more information, but... If you do, get on a plane and go to Charleston in South Carolina. And you got the brief. And here's his number. Give him a buzz when you're at the gate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, was, it was pretty much that. It it was. We thought it was a G up, even at the gate, going, nah, this what? just can't be for real. We're looking for cameras. I was, talking, Jeremy, I was like, on the way to the door, I'm like, mate, seriously, are we writing for him? Is he writing? Are we writing for us? Yeah. What is, 
what does he expect? Like, we were everything going through our mind. And anyway, we get there. He's got all these beautiful cars out the front and all the rest of it. And it was on a golf course. So how'd you get from the airport to his house? There was a range lift and then you, you checked into a hotel and then you went to the studio? Or you yeah. jumped in an Uber and it dropped us out the front of his house. Yeah. <laughs> Did you stay there? Uh, just for the day. Just for the oh, day. just for the day. So we, okay. so we had a nice bunch. I don't know if you've been to Charleston. And it Never. is unbelievable. That was, that was part of the experience because yeah. Charleston is like, it's got a, a pretty crazy history. I think it's the first spot where it's, when they dropped off slaves and mm. things like that. But um, it's like, if I could describe it for those who have never been, it is like a clean New Orleans. Nice. Right. Yeah, so yeah. New Orleans, I've still got that cool culture in the food, but yeah. Um, yeah, a bit smoother around the edges. Yeah. So what's it like working in the studio with him? Is it like daunting? Are you guys like... like yeah. yeah. Well... Yeah. He was pretty, he was real down there. He was really cool. Nice. He's like, let me check out this house. And, oh, cool. and he's like, we go through, he's like, all the kids. It's like cribs. And, uh, it, it was like cribs. Yeah. And then we go to his man cave, which this is, uh, it's probably the size of this building. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> and he's, he's a sports crazy. So on one wall, I reckon 20 TV screens. No way. All different yeah. Well, it's a giant TV screen with all, yeah, it feels like oh. you're at a well, super. It was like uh, you, like sports you're in a bar. casino watching yeah. the, uh, the yeah. in sports Whoa, bar. Oh, that's his studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's just pretty hangs out. We have a punt as we were sort of. Oh, as we were <laughs> that's so fun. This song, but we um, Tom had an old song that we hadn't, we hadn't used in a long time, and I was like, just just get this one out. And then, mm. I don't know, yeah, that's one of those times when just an hour went by and the song was finished. Oh, cool. How is it when you have those moments like that when you've only got like a day to do something? Oh, I know, and to be honest, I think it's just because he's so experienced is why the. The um, the session went so well, and I wouldn't even call it a session. We were actually doing sessions in Nashville. You do sessions in Nashville, yeah. And to be honest, I was bringing this song up. I really liked this song. I liked it, and I was springing it up to in these sessions. But no one was really giving it much love. They were going to gravitating towards yeah. probably the more popular things. Okay. Everyone wants yeah. a hit, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just thought it was a nice, timeless song. I wanted to be able to write a song that Willie Nelson would write or something like that, you know. Tom Petty and yeah, Jeremy was the one that pushed it. He went, "No, just show him that song." I literally just played it a little, uh, you know, the idea and the melody. He went, yeah, man, yeah. Oh, really? Let's do it. Let's write. What's it about? And Anyway, we just hooked in. He just didn't overthink it. He just went, no, tell the story. Just tell it no. how it is. Don't. It was, we're not writing for radio. We're not writing for any of that. And it didn't make the fourth album because we probably weren't ready. We, we hadn't got our head around recording and how we were going to do it. And yeah. I'm so glad it didn't because... You know, as you mentioned earlier, we're in no hurry with this fifth album. We are yeah. not writing for radio. We're not writing for the record company. We're not writing for... Selfishly, we're writing for ourselves. We're trying to write a timeless album or a timeless song. And this song is definitely that for us. We've got, yeah, it um, tells yeah. the story. Is um, They say you learn something from every producer that you work with. What was the one thing you really got with him as a songwriter and being in the studio that you kind of learned from him? Oh, mm. Being in the moment. Being in the moment and not like not overthinking, not overthinking, yeah, yeah. gut instinct because that's easy to do, isn't it? Yeah, I, if, <laughs> you get caught up. You can you definitely get caught up in stuff. Yeah, yeah but the best to... part of the whole experience, honestly, was he sent us to one of his favourite restaurants. <laughs> yeah, he said, "Boys, song's done. I'm going to send you. I'm going to ring up. I'm going to get you. You can't get in." So he made the call for us. Nice. So just go mm. down. They're going to put you to the bar and just I don't. Don't even look at the menu, just get the knocky. Yeah. And I'm like, knocky, we're from the beef capital. It's got to it's gotta be meat. It's got to be meat in a dish, otherwise it's not a meal. Yeah. Anyway, we both ordered meals. Like, oh, we'll get the knocky. You know, we suggested it. And oh, my goodness, it was the, yeah, the best, best knock you've ever had. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was great. We were taking photos like proper tourists. <laughs> You're taking photos of the knocky. The bar. We're dropping his name as well. Oh, so Darius Ruckus sent us. <laughs> like, hey. like, uh, yeah. uh, tell us about this Tiny Towns tour as well that you guys have been playing. Unreal. Um, yeah. Jeremy mentioned in one of the early interviews that it wasn't ideal for the liver, but it was definitely... Yeah, you got to get uh, back into practice. Oh, know? mate, it's crazy. The Tiny Towns tour uh, originated years ago because we're from, you know, we're from a country town and all our uh, earlier gigs yeah. were in remote and regional communities, mining towns and... Yeah, I remember talking to you about this. Yeah, and, yeah, there, yeah. and, you know, we played 21st and yeah, of course. played at all the football matches, you yeah, know, yeah, they'd yeah. always get Busby Maru to come out and our Hyundai XL, Jam PA, <laughs> speakers out the window. Oh, nice. Know. I like that, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jeremy and I getting out there cramped, <laughs> yeah. um, finally getting there, playing these awesome gigs, heaps of fun and just of big nights and whatever. Yeah. And then fast forward five, ten years and, you know, you know, we now do this for a living yeah. and all 
familiar faces were coming to oh, all cool. the city gigs. So nice. not just Brisbane, but Melbourne, Sydney, mm. Perth. We're seeing all these people from these areas. And remember, you used to come out oh, and you played in the things so nice. 21st. Mm. And we were there at that. And so they had this, um, in a way, a bit of an ownership. You know, they saw us when we were yeah. playing covers and Love originals. It. And and so the idea was like, you know, these guys are still being loyal to us yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should return the favour and just see what happens. And so... Few years, quite a few years back, we we went to we 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 just had a shot. We went, look, we're going to do this thing called the Tiny Towns Tour. Our goal is to try to get to every tiny town in the country yeah. before we die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, try every Palmer and steak from every. Yeah, oh, <laughs> that's the other bad thing. It's not good for health. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you know, the first tour was such a success. We were asking people, where should we go? Yeah. And like we knew some of the locations, and they'll always be on it. Mm. Um, and. Then there's places we've never been. And so they, you know, there's a place called Armatry. Shout out Armatry Hotel. Uh, it's population 26. Love it, man. And they kept nonstop humbugging us for the first tiny towns. Come to our town. Come yeah. to us. I'm like, go to Armatry. It's like a 15-hour drive and there's 26 people. That'd yeah, be, yeah. That'll cost us. <laughs> but after the second uh, announcement of the second tiny towns, it was like, we can't ignore this for too much longer. And nice. 800 people. Wow. Uh, we're like, what? And and that was sold out. They could have got so many more. People want to go yeah. to these pubs. They want mm. to go to these destinations. And so that was probably a bit of a penny dropping moment for us. We're like, well, yeah. mm. people want to go back to, hey, I have, I want to see them back at my hometown of Billawila. I want to see yeah. them at um, Ilfric Home at the Wellshot Hotel. I yeah. love that pub. So we we now try to do it. I mean, uh, you can't do it too much more than once a year. It's yeah. it's heavy. Yeah. It's hard yakka. Yeah, yeah, Lots yeah. of hours in the bus. And, mm. you know, as soon as you get there, you're having a few beers with the locals. Oh, exactly. Yeah, so you get on wine. It's, you can't sneak off to your hotel room. You can't look <laughs> up in the car and just tell the driver to take you. Just take me back to my hotel room. You've got to hang around. Yeah. And I think every, basically, it's an old school lock-in. Yeah. Oh, yeah, um, that's the other so thing. Like, yeah. Then you've got to get up, then you've got to drive, because you can't jump on planes, you've got to drive to these places. Oh, yeah. So yeah, yeah, you yeah. Over, you get to the next spot, and as soon as you get there, the next town's excited, like, and you rock up, and they've got a steak and a beer. <laughs> you're going, oh, let's do it again. Yeah. yeah, it's the only way to get through. You're like, wow. Yeah, and you, you, you accept going. it. Well, you accept it. And part of the Tiny Towns Tour is actually not just playing and taking a good quality production show to the towns. That's a big part of it. But it's just about immersing yourself in the community. Yeah. And they love it and we love it. And um, look, it's hard. It's it's hard, Yaka, but you you benefit. They, um, I genuinely feel like that your followers, particularly from those areas, yeah. just become more committed to you and loyal. And yeah. uh, it'd be great to see more bands do it. Mm. I understand why it's hard for them. And yeah. We obviously know the landscape, particularly in Queensland regional towns. Yeah. So we've got that benefit, but we won't stop. We've been doing it in New South Wales, Victoria, and, you know, we're, uh, we're going to try to do it everywhere. We're just, just trying yeah. to have a have a bit of a go wherever we can. Yeah, it's a great thing to do. And the hospitality you get from those places as well. It's Reckon, not just like oh, you go on to play mate. the gig. It's like, hey, we're going fishing tomorrow morning. Do you want to come? Or it's yeah, like, I hey, know. we're going dirt biking. You know, all that other stuff that you yeah, get from yeah. those shows. Clay yeah. shooting. Oh, mate. Clay no, shooting. Don't, don't get accommodation. Just stay at our place. Oh, yeah. No, that's the number one. The, yeah. And, yeah. You know. Oh, mate. When we first went to Armatry, we got there late at night. The publican's waiting for us. We got there about... Maybe one in the morning. Nice. And he's waiting. He went, hang on, boys. And then we end up having a huge night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> with him. Like, it's just us. There was no one in the pub. Like, we had full, like, we're pouring ourselves beers, you know. <laughs> yeah, he's like, no, yeah. no, nah, nah, help yourself. <laughs> yeah. And then we stayed at the pub and we woke up a little bit hungover. A little bit. And sort of like, oh, where are we? This old school pub. And you walk downstairs and here's a ribeye on the bone and a two is new for breakfast. <laughs> here you go, mate. No, no, that's what we do. And then we got the boys all set up. We're taking you guys out shooting, clay shooting out here. and Love it, man. Love it. <laughs> and they're coming back playing the gig. So, yeah, yeah you, you you get deep into the community. It's fun. Yeah, and I think like a lot of people assume that the Cap City shows are often the favourites, but it is often the ones that you don't expect that become like the highlights oh, yeah. of the tour, you know, because of those reasons. Totally. Absolutely. Well, that's an annual thing now, almost now, yeah. Armatry. And, uh, and so, to, like, Well Shot Hotel up in Ilfracombe, which oh, nice. a lot of people mightn't have heard about. It's yeah. half an hour out of Longreach. Yeah. It's, yeah. Man, it's way out there. west yeah. where yeah. the rain don't fall, what yeah. James Blundell would say. Oh, nice. And uh, it's <laughs> like, mate, it's the coolest looking pub. Cowboy hats on the roof, nice, on the ceiling. Man. and. Really cool atmosphere. So you could yeah, make sure. those things annually. Yeah, but, awesome, man. I, I think, you know, and people 
really appreciate when bands make the effort, they make the effort because they know how you know far and remote that some of these places are. So it's yeah. great that you guys do it. It's awesome. Get around you guys. And for this tour in August, that's going to be fun as well. So you're starting in uh, Queensland as well. We've got Gladstone, Bundaberg. Fun yeah, shows. yeah, yeah. I always start up north a little bit, give yeah, yourself you some confidence, exactly. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, we're really, really excited. A bit different than the tiny towns. Like we uh, had more acoustic, but good production. This is full band, we're like red hot band. Nice. Um, the boys that have been with us for years, and then also Ian Perez on the keys, who's superstar from Wolf Mother and Bernard Fenning. He's playing oh, of course, with now. Yeah, I know him. He's, he's so good, and yeah. he's played all over our records. So we've got. The dream team, uh, production, you know, crew, it's like a big family and we're really excited to bring these new songs to life, actually. Yeah, I was going to say it must be getting hard to pick a set list. Very. <laughs> Very. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm pulling out the electric guitar, which I haven't done in a few years. Talk actually, about I that. Well, I haven't done in a long time. There Probably we go. That'd be first fun. First or second album, so. Um, nice, man. Yeah, we're going to change it up a little bit. We're going to stick to our roots, but um, yeah. Nice. Well, while, we're we're talk- while we're talking touring, I'd like to play a little game. So this is called Memory Lane. So what I've done is I've gone through your gig history and I've plucked out ones at random yeah, okay. to see what you remember about it. Now, it doesn't necessarily <laughs> need to be the gig. It can be things around it, like the hotel, yeah, check-in, hanging out like with it. other bands. So we're going to go for a trip down Memory Lane. As you said, it's, it's been an amazing career so far. So let's kick things off. August 23rd, 2013, the Gimpy Music Muster. Country. Acts like Troy Cassidy, we had James Blundell too, we had uh, Mental Identity. Hey, yeah, what do we remember about the Gimpy Muster in 2013, if anything? I'm... Free 2000, I th- oh my God. If it's the one I think, I'm thinking. Uh, I also was there with... Uh, I had a side project band. Okay. Which was real, quite, a, quite a liability. Um, <laughs> a good, good oak. And it's literally just all my mates that just get right up under it. Garage folk, out of tune, just awesome. Yeah. Um, Buzz Bimmer is my real job. And I was like behind their back saying, I don't want to do gig with good oak and then Buzz Bimmer. It's too hard because yeah. you've got to be of course, you get quite back full to back. Yeah, of yeah, good yeah. oak and then go to your main gig. <laughs> yeah. Uh, got through the gigs. I remember the blues tenant. For Buzz Mary was unbelievable. We oh, did yeah. two shows. That's where we did two shows. Show, yeah, at the Blues Tent. Yeah, we did the main main stage, which is always great. But then we did the Blues stage, which was how big's the muster? How many people does it get? Oh, it's pretty big. Thousand. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. It, I, I, I feel I, like seven, eight thousand. Oh, maybe more. I mean, when it's humming on the in the in the humming days, it could be up to. Uh, I'll be lying. Probably, or just having a guess at say fifty thousand. Oh no! Nice. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, yeah. Because there might be, you know, remember those it's big, big stages. It, the main stage is big. Yeah, it's, it's be very big. Ten thousand. Anyway, yeah, who knows? Nice. So back to big. back, back to back. Yeah. But it was not where the action happened. It was out in the um, out in the camping camping area. Remember, Jeremy? Yeah, Swill Around, Hill. They called it. Yes, yeah, Swill Hill. So basically, they set this bar up. It's a campsite, but it's a bar as good as. Oh, it's good right. as one of the stages oh, inside. Like, oh, really? Stages. Yeah. And they've got a full stage. All the bands just know to go there, and it's just someone's private campsite. They call Swill Hill. And oh, my God. Shout out. That's where the party starts after the festival closes down. A few sore heads the next day. <laughs> yeah, very much. And I think there was a few campers that were uh, both um, happy they were camping beside us to hear the music for the first two hours, <laughs> yeah. and then very unhappy when it didn't stop. Until <laughs> <like that. laughs> yeah. Uh, let's go. 2014, you played with... Yeah. This is uh, this is Australia Day, uh, 2016. You played with uh, you and I, Jeb and I. You remember this? Uh, this is Good Oak as well is on this. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Now that I know who Good Oak is, <laughs> Eaton's Hill. Your it was Eaton's yeah. Hill. Eaton's Hill. Eaton's yeah. Hill and the Gurus as well. What do That's I remember? Right. I remember we had on tour with us a bloke by the name of Ryan Keane, who was one of Ed Sheeran's best friends from England. So. At the time, the the head of um, the label were like, "Hey, look, there's this guy who's doing really well in England. Can um, Ed wants him to come over? Would could you guys take him on tour?" And he was a legend, and we became great mates. But he had never seen UMI before, right? Yeah. So we're trying to. How do you explain UMI to someone from England that's never seen him? Like, how do you explain Tim Rogers? Yeah, well, you can't exactly. So you've just got to put him in front of the stage, right? Yeah. And we already played, I think, and then we're like, come on, you got to watch UMI, like they're legendary Aussie band, man. And 
um, you never know what you're going to get with Tim Rogers. And so, you know, and there was a moment there <laughs> where I think he's rocking out and Tim Rogers, this is, and yeah. belting out in the sun, just killing it. And then he spits up in the air <laughs> and catches it back in his mouth. And this pommy mate of ours kept saying, but did you see, I can't do an English accent, <laughs> but did you see he actually spat it and he caught it i had never seen it he was baffled he was like i was like oh yes, yes this is uh yeah sorry i I've said, I said like that's how you explain that's australian yeah. rock and roll <laughs> he was the whole day would not stop talking about that move oh that's so funny when you explain something and then it like literally lives up to it hey it's so true <laughs> uh, but let's go uh later on that year uh heard all reports this man is absolutely amazing you're beautiful you are beautiful. You are beautiful. It's James Blunt. Talk yeah. to me about that. We yeah. did the whole, whole tour. Whole tour. Nice. All Australia and a couple in New Zealand as well. Um, it was fun. We were all in the bowling at that tour, so we were going 10 pin bowling after every show. But Would James go with you? Yeah, we had a few big nights with him. Yeah, he was great. Big yeah. nights with Old him. Oh, man, great. Realise how mega famous he, he, he is. His well, Twitter game's strong too. Mate. Well, that's when he was Incredible. peak. He just... So... Like when they asked us to do James Blunt, I was like, "Oh, really? Is that, is that, does that smash or whatever?" And now the one of the guys is like, "Trust me, trust me. Wait till you meet this guy, right?" And man, he is. I think I want to say he's one of the funniest human beings I've ever met. Very clever English um, wit. Yeah. Um, I remember there was just like lineups of all these women just constantly wanting to meet him, and they were coming to every show. Uh, we were trying to do the maths on what they. Would spend yeah. on tour, yeah. Like, like yeah. they travel around the world. I'm like, wow, they must just work to see James Blunt. Wow. So um, they were following around Australia. Yeah. Like literally going to every Yeah, show. they try yeah. to Whoa. find out where he stays. Yep. He's at the same place. And like, yeah, it's like. Terrible. They'd be messaging us saying, hey, what motel is James at? Are you staying at the same places? And they'd probably, they'd follow cars and all sorts of stuff. We'd be Whoa. playing. We'd be staying at the backpackers down the road. <laughs> <laughs> so you can follow us. But yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're at the <laughs> hostel. <laughs> hostel. Um, but yeah, a few cool moments. I um bet. Definitely, oh, I probably can't go into it, but remember his vo- vocal technique. Um, what was we singing? were half putting shit on him a little bit because we kept hearing them doing la 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 la. I'm like, well, I didn't think he took himself that serious. Yeah. Anyway, the whole tour, we were like, oh, they're doing their vocal warm ups yeah, again, yeah, you know, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Last gig, our drummer's gone in to go to the bathroom, but it ended up being a door that went into their room. Yeah. And they were doing their vocal warm ups. <laughs> And I won't explain exactly what they're doing, but they weren't actual vocal warm-ups. It was just like a band getting together. And I think he was at the front, like with his pants down, going, la, 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 la. <laughs> So he's just taking the piss the whole time. <laughs> right. Absolute <laughs> crack up. Oh, that's hilarious, man. All right, let's go to 2017. Sometimes these are true, sometimes these aren't. But did you play with? Did you guys play with Elton John? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You guys are playing with everyone. Yeah. <laughs> well, what? I had to think about that. And that, yeah, was, that was the best tour of all time. Yeah. Talk, talk to you about the <clears throat> Elton tour. This is 2017, playing some big venues too around the Man, country. We did. Well, those biggest shows. Probably ever. the biggest shows we've ever done. You know, I think we did 28,000 in Mackay. Well, well uh, 30,000 uh, Cairns. Cairns. Yeah, Kazali Stadium, is it? Kazali's yeah. and Cairns. Yeah. Just the two of us too. No band. Oh, acoustic. And Cairns we were a bit worried about that, but it was the best thing we did because we had to get their attention before the, the superstar came on. Mm. And, man, it it was actually strangely easier than getting their attention in a, in a smaller, like, arena with James Blunt or whatever. Yeah. Maybe we had a bit of North Queensland advantage, but we did a bunch of shows all around the country, actually. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, it was really good. And we would see him every now and again just in passing. because hey, boys, I'm going to come say good day. I'm going to come say good day. And just, and just <laughs> in passing, it was like, oh, wow, down John. And he came to our dressing room after a gig. And it was the same night the Broncos and Melbourne Storm were playing in a semi final. So we left and went straight back to our motel. And it's the only night that he. <laughs> oh, I'm filthy. It's the only oh, night that he. The no, crew met him. They all got photos with him. Oh, the crew did. I was like, what do you mean? Yeah, he's like, yep, come to say hello to you. No, oh, Broncos lost too. Yeah, they did. Remember the first gig, though? The first gig was at Mackay. Yeah. 
and it was outdoors, you know, and we went into the dressing room. We oh. thought we were into his room, uh, in our room, and so we're like, oh, this is cool. So we jumped in our room and started drinking everything and whatever. Oh, this and is the first birthday. Oh, my God. Oh, we were actually in his room drinking his rider, and the crew came, get out, get out, quick, 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 get out. Because you, <laughs> you don't want to be in his room, man, no. Um, imagine that, seeing the support band l- l- smack it into his rider before the gig. <laughs> and you're like there going, geez, the hospitality's pretty good here. Do you, do you remember what was in there? Yeah, I can't remember. To be honest, I can't remember. I think we literally got in, cracked a beer or cracked I something. Cracked and- a beer and I was like, gee, this room's huge. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, God, they're looking after us. And then <laughs> yeah. uh, the promoter's like, cow? get the hell yeah, out of here quickly. He knew it was a mistake, but then he took us to our room, which was a couple of plastic chairs. Yeah, and, of course. Uh, yes. a <laughs> fan blowing and a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, mate. <laughs> uh, another one. If this is... I'm picking up good vibrations. Yeah. She's giving me... You guys play with the Beast Boys too? Yeah. yeah. You guys, this is an incredible <laughs> resume, guys. I remember we got asked to do that, and I met the booking agent at the time. I was like, oh, I'm not sure that's the right look. And I said, mate, it's the Beach Boys, for God's sakes. Yeah. Forget it's the look. And oh, and I was like, we're, we're from Rocky, mate. We don't care about what we look like. And also, <laughs> these guys are legends. So the best thing about that is they were older fellas. They were yeah. real old. They had like awesome band. Mm. But they showed so much respect. I mean, they would sit front row during our sound, sound check. check. Yeah, and really. Just go, oh, and just want to know it, yeah. everything about us, our families. And we brought like my wife came, and um, you know. I think Jeremy's kids were there. They were wanting to meet everyone. They were, yeah, beautiful. They were actually really awesome. It was a great tour. We did a whole lot of um, theatres, entertainment centres, but then we did one at Bondi nah. Beach. Oh, yeah, we did too. And to play with the Beach Boys on Bondi Beach was... Um, that, that's that was right. Like that was... Oh, I that forgot was about that. What, yeah. did they just set up a stage there? Big stage on the sand, on the beach, yeah. On the sand. Beach Boys on Bondi. Whoa. We played a gig with them. It was unreal. Yeah. That's yeah. incredible because it's pretty rare. Like like you were saying, like you might meet their headline band if they're an international. But the fact they're watching you sound check and do all that is so uh, cool. No, was so like, much what respect, was our yeah. name? Um, Which one? Brian Wilson? No, he wasn't. No. So they split. They had the two different bands. Okay, gotcha. And, um, and I'm not sure. Mike Love? This, this is a slight. Yeah, Mike Love, but... Um, and he would stay in our room. Like, I don't think he went to his room. No, no. He, he would just stay in our room and just talk. Just talk to us. Oh, stuff. wow. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And that was like, really on lovely. stage, they didn't look that old, but off stage, they did. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, my dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's one, you've told me this story a few times, but I love people who haven't heard it. The time that you got to join on stage. King of the Mountain. The Mighty Oils. This story is amazing. Oh, that's, yeah. that's yeah. hands down. The best moment. Highlight of my career. Yeah. I nearly quit the next day. I was like, I can't, <laughs> nothing can possibly happen better than this. In my yeah. Life. This was at the Big Red Bash, uh, which pr- arguably one of the best festivals in the world. Sure, they yeah, call yeah. it the most remote festival in the world, because yeah, it is. It would be. Yeah. Um, you know, on the base of the Simpson Desert. Yeah. We were out filming, and I think we even played a gig the night before. I can't remember. We might have been on the night before. We're doing the Queensland tourism stuff. Queensland tourism stuff. So, nice. yeah, we'd been there a day early. And then we were hanging out at the pub. At the uh, Birdsville Hotel, yeah. sick pub, just yeah. having a steak and a beer, and about to hit the hit the bed, hit the pillow, and over comes this huge terror of a man, Peter Garrett, and everyone could see him coming over, and we'd met him years and years before. He he gave us a grant uh, when he was a minister, you know, of, um, yeah. supporting uh, emerging Indigenous acts, yeah. James Torres Strait Islander, as you know, um, and he, we got some money to go do a. An album to help us break into contemporary world. So pretty nice. much, we got a lot. We got him to thank for our careers as well. Amazing, so, amazing. Uh, he came over, and I remember all the crew and the band's like, "Peter Garrett's coming out." Peter Garrett's coming out, and like, the <laughs> just it's <was> like <laughs> freezing. Everyone froze, you know. Yeah. And he was so kind and generous. He went, "Boys, Tom and Jeremy." Like he knew our first names. It was like, "What?" Yeah. Went, I've been watching your careers from afar, and I'm so proud of you guys. Um, I, I'm absolutely loving it. Would you do us the honor and join us on stage tomorrow and sing to sing Treaty? Whoa. We're going to join it. And the, the funny thing about it is, um, obviously, there's a part there with all language, you know, you know, indigenous um, language. And Jeremy's Torres Strait Islander, and he was <laughs> he was shitting himself because he thought that Peter Garrett might have wanted him to sing that part. Oh, <laughs> so right. Like, hey, does he know that I'm I'm Torres Strait Islander? <laughs> So I'm kind so of staring him, I'm staring him the whole time, up. going, "Mate, learn those, learn the words." <laughs> yeah. Um, most nervous we've ever been, actually. I bet. And we don't get nervous like that anymore, but they came, talk about professionalism, they had just finished a six-week tour of Europe, so they were red hot. Yeah. You wouldn't have thought that they would have had to run through songs. Yeah. They flew from wherever their last show was 
into the big red bash and behind the stage, they had a room blocked off with a back line and they were rehearsing their full set. Wow. So everyone could hear them. We were backstage, you could hear them. And then they called us in. Oh, wow. And, oh, man, we were like forgetting the words and, and the sheets. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and, yeah like, of course. We didn't have to learn much. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. But um, we went on stage and Jeremy wanted – He's never been on stage without a guitar. So he, yeah, it's a weird feeling. You felt a bit naked. Sort of nothing. I was, yeah. And then the um, Rob Hurst Rob gave, you. gave me a set of drumsticks. So I'll just use some scap sticks. And <laughs> yeah. And nice. there and- but the the defining moment is we went on, and Jeremy, you just kept kept moving further away from the front of the stage. You just didn't want to be in middle stage. <laughs> yeah. And so I didn't know what to do. So I kept like gravitating to the left with Jeremy, and we were supposed to be in singing with Peter Garrett. And Peter Garrett does this huge symbol, like he's singing, like, you know, with his dancing technique. He points to us with his gigantic arms, like one big point to us. And then, then again, he points down to the floor near his feet, as in, get here. Now. <laughs> yeah, we, we went straight. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's this photo of us just screaming treaty into each other, like into our faces. And I, I've got the photo, it's on Instagram somewhere, but I want the proper nice. photo. Any journalist that took that, because I want to hang that up in the oh, program. Perfect, man. On Triple M's homegrown with Matty O, it's time for. Uh oh! It's right party or dinner. This is called right party dinner. So I've got three acts. You've got to write a song with one, mm. party with the next, third you take home to dinner. <laughs> okay. All right, pick completely at random. Your three yeah. acts are. Regina got a gun. Aerosmith. <laughs> Second act. Kiss. Third act. Chili Peppers. Oh, wow. you got to write a song, party with one, the third Oof. you take home to dinner with Aerosmith, Kiss, and the Chili Peppers. That is tough because they're all... I want to party with them all. <laughs> yeah, that's my point. <laughs> yeah. Trying to which one. I would love to write a song with Chili Peppers. Chili Peppers. Maybe right, I'm being there with John Frusciani. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And Nikita. All right, well, that gets, that gets rid of the writing. We've got dinner and partying with Kiss and Aerosmith. I would party with Aerosmith. Yeah, we're doing it. And she ain't got a gun. Yeah. And this means that we're taken home to dinner. <laughs> Isn't that strange? Imagine being able to tell everyone that you had dinner with Kiss. We got full makeup as well. Yeah, yeah the full experience. I'm on board. That's right. <laughs> totally. Uh, <laughs> lads, thanks so much for coming in and having a chat. It's awesome. Congrats on the album. It's a ripper. It's so good to see you guys in person. So glad that you guys are well. Family's good. Album's out, and can't wait to see you play at the corner in Melbourne, September. And it's a pleasure as always. Thanks, Matty. You love being on the show, mate. For all the latest rock news, interviews and backstage experiences, don't forget to subscribe to Triple M Rock on the Listener app.